submarine, surface and amphibious forces are all elements that readily spring to mind when we think about naval engagements. However, there's a fourth equally important element. Due to its specialised nature though, it doesn't often receive the recognition it deserves. This element is known as mine warfare. The mine is one of the oldest, yet most effective weapons in maritime history. During World War II, not only were more ships sunk by mines than by submarines and aircraft combined, their use on the basis of effort required to produce one enemy ton casualty was regarded as ten times more economical than submarine attacks. The reasons for their effectiveness are threefold. Firstly, they are a relatively simple weapon, compact, easy to store and easy to deploy, yet highly reliable and extremely dangerous. Secondly, they are a weapon that waits. Unlike a manned weapons platform, they require no maintenance after deployment and are continuously ready for action over a long period of time. Finally, cost effectiveness. Very, very cost effective. HMAS Waterhen in Sydney's north is the RAN's mine warfare base. Extensive modernisation throughout the 1990s, along with a new fleet of state-of-the-art mine warfare vessels, makes this base a world leader in this highly specialised form of naval warfare. To have an appreciation of these assets and how they work, however, we must examine the basics of mines and mine countermeasures. Broadly speaking, sea mines can be divided into two main classifications. Moored mines, which are positively buoyant and moored to a sinker on the seabed, and ground mines, which have negative buoyancy and lie on the ocean floor. Of the two, the ground mine is the superior weapon. Harder to detect and easier to deploy, the violent pressure blast associated with its detonation can lift a target vessel quite literally out of the water, breaking its back in the process. Modern designs such as stonefish and dragonfish rely on sophisticated sensory and assessment systems in order to detect and classify approaching targets. They do this in several ways. Consider a large ship moving through the ocean. What telltale signals emanate that can advertise its presence to a waiting mine? Firstly, the ship makes noise. The engines, propellers and general machinery all combine to give out what is known as an acoustic signature. Also, a ship, being made largely of steel and other metals, inherently possesses an ambient magnetic field and thus also projects a magnetic signature. Finally, the displacement of a moving hull through the water creates an area of low pressure between the keel and the seabed known as a pressure signature. Modern mines are designed to exploit all of these signatures. Furthermore, their microprocessors can differentiate between different classes of ship. For example, a warship's acoustic signature differs considerably to that of a large merchant vessel, thus enabling these mines to be highly selective in their targets. In order to combat these weapons, a whole range of countermeasures operations are required. The RAN deals with what are called active countermeasures, namely mine sweeping and mine hunting. The idea behind mine sweeping is to defeat the mine logic and hence actuate the mine. To do this, mine sweepers perform what are known as emulation or influence sweeps. This involves the use of towed steel cylinders known as dyads. Fitted with ferrite magnets and acoustic generators, they are designed to generate signatures which closely resemble those of a particular class of ship. Here at HMAS Waterhen, the RAN currently operates a force of five minesweepers, given the designation MSA, Minesweeper Auxiliary. The second and most significant countermeasures technique is a highly specialised operation known as mine hunting, which involves the use of high definition sonar to detect mines and remotely operated vehicles to neutralise them. 
Water Hen is also home to six new human class mine hunters. To date, the most sophisticated class of surface warships ever built for the RAN. As a result of the 1993 Australian Strategic Review, which identified shortcomings in the RAN's mine countermeasures capability, the $1.4 billion Huon class mine hunter project saw six new MHC or Mine Hunter Coastal vessels enter commission between 1999 and 2003. Based on an Italian design, the ships are 52 metres in length and display 720 tonnes. Since steel is obviously not a material of choice for mine hunting applications, Huon's hull is made from a special material called GRP or glass reinforced plastic. The resultant single skin or monocoque shell has the added advantage of being not only extremely strong, but inherently flexible, allowing it to absorb tremendous shock loadings from nearby underwater explosions. This structural flexibility is further augmented by a unique approach to machinery mounting. Utilizing a special cradling system, the low magnetic engines and machinery are isolated from the surrounding hull and decks. Thus, when the ship flexes under shock, as seen here during class trials, the isolated equipment remains isolated and the mine hunter remains effective. For mine detection, high definition sonar is employed. Unlike a conventional hull mounted sonar, which can operate effectively only in certain water depths and temperature conditions, Huon's variable depth sonar allows the unit to be lowered to an optimum depth for improved performance projecting a beam up to 1,000 metres ahead of the ship whilst simultaneously performing mine classification functions. For mine disposal, the ships carry two SUTEC Double Eagle II Mine Disposal Vehicles, or MDVs. Equipped with searchlights, closed circuit video cameras and the state-of-the-art DAMDIC Mine Disposal Charge, these vehicles can be deployed in excess of 500 metres from the ship. Alternatively, countermeasures may be carried out through clearance diving operations. Each Huon provides full onboard support for a diving task unit whose personnel are able to operate down to a depth of 90 metres. <laughs> 